G'day podcast crew and welcome to today's episode. Today's episode is a release of our live stream that we did last week. That's right, we did a live stream last week. We edited it up nice and easy for you so then you can listen to it on your way to work, um, while you're walking the dog, while you're working out, however you enjoy listening to us. Um, We'll have it right here ready for you to listen to um, on this week. But if you're interested in joining us for our live streams, we hold them at around about 5.30 every single week on the Tuesdays, um, which um, you might have to do some conversions if you're not in Australia on Australian Easter Standard Time. But the weekly live streams that we do hold get a lot of comments, get a lot of feedback, and we really enjoy the interaction that we have with you guys on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram. So if you're available at that time of the week, make sure you come join us for a live stream, pop in some comments or questions as we go along for that particular theme. And now time for the episode. Enjoy, and I'll see you in a couple of days. Wait, I won't see you. I will hear you. You will hear me. You'll hear from me in a couple of days. Today we're going to be talking about titling your videos. So when we're going to we're going to first touch on about um, why you should title your videos in the first place. Some of you can already comment a few ideas as to why that is the case. But if you can't think of actual reasons why you would title your video, do let me know and I'll I'll think about it. And then we'll talk about uh, the change from keywords to key phrasing in this modern day of SEO. Woo, SEO. Um, And then we'll talk about a couple of tools that will be useful for you when generating these keyword ideas. Um, And everything that I'm going to talk about today is also works in both the titling end in the sense of you finish your video, it's up, it's all edited, it's all ready to go, and you're ready to put it out into the world, you just need to give it a name, all the way to back at the start, when before you even start filming your video, or even creating your video, um, these tools will also help you generate ideas as to videos you can create um, for your clients. Should you title your video? Yes, yes, you definitely should title your video um, when you're uploading your video to YouTube, when you're uploading it to Instagram, when you're uploading it to Facebook, when you're uploading it to LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Twitch, any more live streaming, but definitely a title is needed in there. Um, Now, can anyone think of the reason why you would title a video? And feel free to comment below if you know. So the reason that you'd actually title a video is um, a couple of reasons. First off, we'll start off with uh, humans. So humans like to understand what we're watching or what we're about to jump into in regards to a video. Um, and having that um, having that idea presented to us in nice, clear, legible writing or text um, will make it a lot easier for us to click that button and understand what we're actually getting into when it comes time to um, investing our time and effort into watching the video. Now, um, the following two from the follow on from the humans. The reason that we title is for the robots. So when I say robots, as in Google, YouTube, or the, you know, beautiful machines out there that are categorizing our content, they need to understand what our video is about. And to do that, they need to have data and information. At the moment, video, um, these algorithms and Many computers out there can't identify images and they can't identify video just because there's way too much information. All they see is pixels. There's not there's not a whole lot of understanding of what's going on in there. But when it comes time um, to actually understanding what's in a say image or a piece of content, what they need to see is um, information that they can understand on read. So text is usually a lot easier for them to understand. And if they've got that in the description, if they've got that more importantly in the title, if they've got that in meta tags, so that's um, invisible tags that are attached to your content that discuss um, other nuances and other topics that your video is discussing or talking about, that's not strictly in the comments or in the description or in the title. So that's another reason why we do titles. And linking onto that, we usually create titles for the algorithm because people are searching videos. We are all, most of us in the world that have access to the internet are using it to search for what we want to be entertained by, what we want to be informed by, and what we want to have a combination of both. And utilizing titles will enable you to get from page, you know, 200 all the way to page 100, making sure that you're using the right key phrases. Now, I'll talk to that in a bit in regards to why I'm not saying keywords and why um, I want to talk to you guys about key phrases. 
And remember, with your titles, even though as humans we do enjoy seeing images, um, a large majority of us are visual learners. Um, when we read something, like we actually take the time to read something and comprehend it, we are going to um, chew that in our brains a lot more and we're actually going to recognize and take in that information a lot more or writing it out than we would by just looking at an image and just moving on. When you're doing titles or when you're coming up with the titles again be it before you actually start filming a video so coming up with keywords or key phrases that will help your you know your channel grow or help your business stand out amongst the rest you can use the tools that we'll, we'll talk about later to build that but we need to think about what our clients actually want to see or what they'll actually be looking for so uh, think about your target market and for those who are unaware, a target market is essentially what people use um, or what businesses use to find the certain type of people that they're looking for. So target market is not a specific person, you know, Joe Blow down the street. Target market is generalized dynamics about a certain person. Now, and we're not talking demographics, but demographics is a little underling, under subheading under the target market bracket. So say, for example, target market, if my videos would help small business owners aged 35 to 60 um, who, let's narrow it down to, you know, people um, in Victoria, Australia um, and, you know, content should be relevant for three to four months, you know, something like that. And with the target market, you get to pinpoint um, you're not excluding anyone else who may not fit these categories. But with your target market, you're pinpointing on the type of people that will rave about you, that will talk about your business, that will buy from you repeatedly. Because if you've got them talking and you've got them loving your product and what you do, then you're able to reach everyone around them, all their friends, all their family, anyone who's associated with them and their business. And then, then it can knock on effect from there. But you want to make sure that you target the exact people that you want to talk to, be it like I said, male and female, certain demographics, certain ages, um, certain locations where they work, where they live, all that type of stuff. But using that information, you're able to detect um, what their level of um, readability is. Um, do they need, you know, quick, um, simple sentence titles or can they handle longer um, titles with a bit of industry jargon in there so say for example um, an industry jargon that um, is definitely used in the video space um, is uh, <laughs> I knew that I was going to need to come up with an example for this so say for example um, a dot str file if I said that to you and you weren't and you weren't aware of what that was and even if you are feel free to comment below an str file um srt i always get those two layers mixed up um is a file that you can use to put captions onto your video so when you create a video um captions there are two types of captions you can have captions burnt into the videos as in that part of the video file or using um dot j s o n um or different types of files but the srt files must get that right um srt files are the default type of files that um, create the captions that are on the bottom of your videos. So say, for example, if you didn't know what that was, you wouldn't be searching that up and therefore I wouldn't exactly reach you that way. But if I was using um, more broad terms in what I was talking about, so say, for example, how do I title a video? It's a question that you guys would probably be searching for when you're you know, doing what you need to do to create your videos. Um, it's simple. It uses plain English. Um, and you're using something that people would understand how to utilize. So, for example, title may be considered a jargon term, but you are using, everyone knows that a title of a video or the title of a book is the words that then represents the rest of the content within. So, in regards to, in regards to words, that is not the complicated part. So we've talked about why you should um, be titling your videos for everyone that discusses both humans, algorithms and robots. And remembering that the title on your video isn't the be all and end all. You can always update and always change it. Um, but I do recommend when you're coming up with a video idea or when you're even when you're crafting the video as in you're filming it, having an idea what the video is called is always a good place to know where you're heading.
Now, the reason I don't say it's a good place to start is because when you're coming up with a video, a lot of people and a lot of my clients do have a tendency of getting stuck about thinking about the title of the video. Okay, what should this be called? What is this whole thing going to be umbrellaed by? What is, and then that type of thinking gets them stuck. Um, they can't move forward and they can't think about doing the actual filming of it because they don't have a name for it. Well, that's okay. Don't, don't come up with a name for it. Just make sure that you think about the content that you're actually providing. Think about what your customer and what your client needs to hear as opposed to what they want to hear and make sure that you deliver it in the best way possible. And then when it comes to a title, as I said before, you can always change it. You can always update it if there's you know, changes in the future where um, a specific key phrase gets a lot of clicks and your video um, matches that phrase. Why not change it? See if you can get a few hits up in the SEO scale and maybe appear on page one for that particular search phrase. But that's the reason why I mentioned about titles not being the be all and end all. But usually it's something that people think about when it comes time to actually posting up your video online or wherever it needs to be. Um, usually we recommend having a title before you usually around the pre-planning stage of doing your video. The reason for this is so that when you're actually it's time to actually get the video out there, you don't have that hurdle or that hiccup. And you also don't have that stress of thinking out, okay, what is this thing called? You can always refer to whatever the, th whatever the video is called by its name. And like I said, as I've, as I've said a few times, it's not the be all and end all if you don't have a title. As long as you know um, what your core um, comments about are in the video, what the main focus of your video is, and why you're doing it in the first place is always a good place to start. And then once you've got all that information, you have that script, in our quick script by the way, if you have, all, if you have that script ready to go, well then being able to come up with a title should be a lot easier because you have all this information that you've already previously rendered to come into that script. And then you can use the tools that we'll discuss later to put that into action and making sure that other people are thinking the same way that you do. So now we're going to move on to key phrasing as opposed to key wording. Now, what do I mean by this? So keywords um, for since the dawn of SEO, since the dawn of the internet, are what people have been focusing on when it term when a, when anyone thinks of SEO. So SEO is search engine optimization. So say for example, when people are talking about Google, and they want to get to the first page of Google, they are talking about SEO. Um, and usually, when you talk about SEO, you're thinking about you know, what type of words can I use in my blog post? What type of words can I use in my, you know, captions, my description, my title of my video to get to that number one spot? Now, it's not that number one spot for all the words that you have in your title or in your description or meta tags. It's all the, the all the terms for that number one spot for that particular search term. Now, um, now that we're in 2020 and beyond, there is a lot more content on the internet than there ever was in the past. We're getting a lot more content being created by multiple different businesses, individuals, companies, or almost everyone is creating content out there in some form or another. And it's quite hard for the search engines to, well, I don't want to say it's hard. <laughs> it's quite difficult for people who are new to the game to um, rank for these specific one word, two word search terms because a lot of them are already being taken up by people who have a lot more time on their hands or a lot more experience or a lot more content to back up what they're saying compared to someone who's just starting out new. Like say for example, there's a um, pair on YouTube that I follow that talk about blogging specifically um, and how to build a um, profit or build a business on blogging. That stuff like takes six months to kick in. <laughs> like six months from when they posted it to six months later before it actually kicks in and starts making them money, um, AdSense revenue and such. Um, they actually put ads on their blogs and people click the link and then they get paid, that type of thing. And it's like, wow, six months when you upload a video on say YouTube and the turnaround time from people being able to see that on quote unquote page one of Google or page one of YouTube, would usually be about five to ten minutes, which is always a bit surprising when I always think about people who focus purely on blogging. But that's just me getting ahead of myself. Now, the reason that we focus on um, key phrasing as opposed to key wording is because people are no longer just searching up specific search terms such as um, plumber Geelong. 
um, say for example, Plumber is the service I need and Geelong is where I'm located. Now, all, all those type of um, keywords, I'm not saying that you disregard them entirely. All I'm saying is that those particular search terms are very pricey when it comes to actually getting your ad on top. And a majority of people actually ignore the ads on Google anyway, which is always a bit surprising. But <laughs> When it comes time to actually appearing your content, your business, um, your work, appearing on that page one of Google for that particular search term is very high and very difficult to get onto, especially when you're starting out and you probably don't have a whole lot of funds to throw that way for AdSense. But now that we're um, getting into the world of using, say, um, Amazon Echoes, Google Homes, um, a lot of people that I know use the uh, voice search feature on their phones so whenever they want to search something up they just tap the icon talk into their phone you know um, plumber Geelong fix leaky faucet and then they go and because they're using the um, because they're using their mouth <laughs> because they're using voice search right and um, because they're using voice search as opposed to just generic one or two word um, search terms those type of search terms are becoming a lot more complex and the avenue for you to be able to get your content to that first page widens considerably because people are using more than just two to three words maximum to search for something. They're asking questions. Hey Google, how do I cook gnocchi pasta? And then it bloop bloop and then it does the thing for them. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because when you're titling your videos, you no longer need to have one to two word to three word titles to be seen by anyone. You can have a lot longer titles that actually appeal to those specific key phrases that people are searching for. People are usually asking questions, and if they're not asking questions, they're usually asking a statement or about a specific news source that usually comes up a fair bit. But making sure that you're thinking about in general, when people are searching for something, when they need to figure out, um, you know, uh, what's one? How do I uh, uh, how do I fix a leaky pipe? Let's bring it back to that analogy. They're not just asking uh, uh, leaky pipe fix because in that case, Google is going to be all right you have a leaky pipe and then they need to fix it. All right, I'll send you to a plumber. And most of the time, that's not what people actually want. People actually want to know how to do it. So they're going to um, organically and naturally say, how do I fix a leaky pipe? They're going to use the sentence in full and that's how they're going to ask these questions of Google, of Bing, not as much, but <laughs> um, say, for example, of of Yahoo, uh, mainly Google, Google is the big, big contender when it comes to voice searching. But as um, you know, as that becomes a lot more apparent in the decade ahead, that is what's going to be happening with a lot of content out there. And if people have the ability to um, watch a video or listen to a podcast, that's a lot easier and simpler for them to get the job done. They're more likely going to do that than read a very long blog post that doesn't have any other supporting content unless they need specific portions of advice and I'm not saying that blog blog posting or that type of content is going away it definitely isn't but if it's supported by a video if it's supported by a podcast people are going to be you know drawn to that a lot more and in turn Google is going to push that forward to them more because that's what they want they want that content to be easily consumed and in that case Google is going to push it for them because that's what they want they want to you know give you the answer for whatever ails you and in that case it's going to be need to be easily digestible for you so nowadays it's no longer about being broad with you know as I mentioned before right those two to three keywords that are very broad in their scope because that's what Google is usually asking a lot of money for because it's simple and it's using one or two words and again when it comes to SEO I'm not saying that this video or this live stream is going to be the full be all and end all when it comes to actually getting that out there and I'm not an SEO expert by far I do dabble with it and because I work in video I do do a lot of work with SEO experts but I'm not saying that I am one but when it comes to SEO when it comes to broad um, terminology or broad wording as I said keywords all that places are usually taken up by a lot of big players. A lot of people that have a lot of money and a lot of time to spend taking that rank. And of course, I'm not saying that you can't get to that rank, 
But especially when you're starting out, you need to work on the key phrasing as opposed to the key wording to get going. And then once you're at a sustainable size, you can start using those words. And as I said, most of the time people are going to be using longer search terms than they ever have in the past because they know they need something specific. People need a specific way to fix their problem and you provide that specific answer. And because um, this amount of content that's out there is varying degrees of usefulness, let me say. So say, for example, when people are looking for, you know, about video content, most of the time they want something within the past two to three years because it's relevant to them, it's relevant to the platform that they're trying to use it on. And if you've got that content there, they're going to be more likely to click on it because it's more relevant. Now, I'm not saying that every you know, two to three years you have to redo the content that you just produced. But if there's anything that you find in your content that no longer you know, doesn't have the same catch or you've built up, you've um, done your quality up since then in regards to video production, or maybe that the stuff has just changed, the platform has changed, the anything else has changed, well then why not, you know, redo that video again with a new updated title? Maybe having that year, you know, 2020 in that year, if that works for you, that can be done. But remember, when people are searching, people are no longer searching these one or two word answers um, for specific needs. So if you can use that to your advantage, I highly recommend that you do. And you use that by your, using your title and having key phrases in your title. Now, um, a lot of platforms out there, including Facebook and YouTube, do have limits on the number of characters that you can use. I think it's around 200, um, around maybe 250, depending on which platform you're on. Um, I wouldn't recommend having a title that long, um, unless you've just got a whole bunch of, um, you know, hit words um, in your title just for the sake of trying to get to the number one spot in Google. And if that's the case, well, you need a plan. <laughs> but in regards to the wording that you would actually put on your video title, you would think about wording that your clients would use. Um, what type of words uh, would they know what the jargon means? And if the words, you know, how to, what can, why do, like things that pose a question are usually a lot more helpful and a lot more and a lot of a faster, it's a slightly easier way to get to page one than just having, you know, such and such tutorial. Then you can change that to, you know, you can change that to best mobile video editor 2020, for example. And you can change this, as I said, with um, with titles, you can always change and update them if it works and, and is better for you. Then you can play around and see what type of, you know, what the algorithm or if the robots put forth. Do you, might, do you think changing your titles to something that reflects um, maybe a specific point in your video where you discuss um, is the Sony X7G the best new camera? I don't think Sony has a 7XG, and if they do, well done memory for coming up with that. <laughs> but most of the time when people are looking for a specific, say, camera review, they're looking for the words that particular camera, review, and best. Or they're coming up with a third title because people want specific answers as opposed to just generalized words. And when you're creating your content library, or when you're creating your question library, as I like to call it, or answer library, question answer library, um, of videos that help your customers, you know, get to you, um, that help them fix, you know, a part of their problem that you can help the rest out with them. Then in that case, you need to come up with titles that are, you know, that cover the words that they need to sing, but think about the questions that people are going to be answering or people that questions that people ask you and use the language that they would use in everyday discussion for them to be able to you know, put that into Google and come up with that type of wording. So we've already touched on why you should title your video, making sure that you do it for both your customers, clients, um, that you do it for the both robots and the analytics. And we've also talked about key phrasing as opposed to key wording and what tactics that you can use in your titles. Now we're going to discuss the specifically, we're going to discuss the tools of what you would be using for your uh, you know, keyword, key phrasing, finding. 
So the tools that I'm about to discuss are tools that we use a lot in our business when generating these ideas. I find it quite useful to um, have an idea generator. We currently use our Notion, which is, let's say, a more advanced Excel spreadsheet type <laughs> booklet wiki thing that we use to have our ideas and we keep having, we have the ideas stored away in there. And for that case, we make sure that we utilize these tools whenever we feel like oh it's not running we don't feel like we're having enough ideas we use these tools to create the ideas but also once we've created a video we also just run the idea or the generalized words past these tools to make sure that we're using the right wordology that we're using the right language that we're using the right terminology for people to actually search and find these videos in the future so first one I want to talk to you about is a fairly explanatory one is Google Keyword Planner. So the Google Keyword Planner is a tool that we, as I said, that we use a lot. But the specific one is it is that you you're using Google, the biggest search engine in the world, and it comes up with um, a lot of content back out at you that gives you an idea of what people are searching for, how regularly they're searching for it, and they also provide you a price in regards to the AdSense. So if people are clicking on your ad, how much money you have to give Google for them to you know, charge you and all that stuff. But the reason that this these um, this content, this, um, what should I say, that this particular product is useful is because you're using that large you know, large sample size. And you're also able to actually use that knowledge to figure out, okay, um, you know, say for example, if over 3 million people are looking up, um, I keep going back to this one today, Plumber Australia, well then that's probably, um, the, the two words are probably going to be quite hard for you to be like, all right, Plumber Australia is not gonna be something that my business can probably get to and ascertain and be on the first page of Google for that matter. Well then look at the ones that have, you know, 500 searches or less per month. Now I know that seems like a very, you know, 3 million to five, um, 500 searches, but the reason that you're giving, you're, you're aiming your um, wording or you're aiming your terminology or aiming your videos at those smaller search numbers is because those, those search numbers are consistent, but also it enables you to actually create content that's going to be useful, that's going to be easy to digest for a smaller number of people, yes, but those people are going to be more likely to see you on page one and they're more likely to click your videos and then bring up your ranking and your level of your entire website and your entire content above with it. And also, when you're looking at these search terms, you can think of, you can think about other search terms that maybe you didn't touch upon in that particular video or other aspects that highly align to those keywords, which then you can create follow up content from. You can follow up in follow up in series. You can create content from there that starts with that particular video that you created. Just looking up those search words through the Google um, <laughs> keyword planner. And then from there, you're able to create more content from there because you've sprouted that um, ideology and that knowledge. So using that tool is something that we recommend before you start um, filming your videos. But if not, it's still there as a piece of content that you guys can use for whenever. And then the extension that we use next is called Keywords Everywhere. So Keywords Everywhere is whenever you Google something, it comes up with the keywords on the side. You'll be able to see that Keywords Everywhere comes up with with related keywords. So when people look up Plumber Geelong, they also look up Plumber Geelong West, which is a suburb in Geelong. People are looking for Plumber Grovedale, again, another suburb in Geelong. Plumbing Supplies Geelong. People are looking, these are all the related keywords. And again, with keywords and key phrases, you're able to utilize that to think about, okay, this is other content that I can create. But when it comes to titling, you can also include other things that you may not have thought about titling within your videos that when you created the content, you know, you did touch briefly um, on Say, for example, when it comes to plumbing in Geelong, you talked about briefly about, you know, in Geelong, because we are slightly, you know, higher set than other cities in the region, we do have some issues about um, water going downhill and blah, 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 blah. Again, I'm making that up completely. <laughs> Please don't yell at me in the comments. But <laughs> when I'm making that point is that you can make that and say, look for what other people also searched for is that, you know, 
You can see about all time plumbing. You can see about all these other ones that people are looking for. And you can mention that in the title of your video, you can put that, you know, what your um, initial aim of the video was, followed by what these things are also what something uh, what other people are searching for to be able to get on top of that type of search term and in that search phrase. Um, so we use that a lot when it comes time to figuring out what we want to um, do and coming up with ideas for um, content. But even though we are based in Geelong and in Australia, um, our content is seen by people throughout the world and all of, because the internet is a nice global place, everything can relate to, you know, globally when you think about it, which is why the 5,000 or less, 500 or less searches per month are encapsulating, like I said, in the Google keyword um, planning, t um, planning tool, is it's encapsulating the whole world. So being nice and specific with that, you can do that too. But when it comes to coming up with, you know, 5,000 searches per month, yes, it's a lot smaller than, say, 3 million, but it's a guaranteed 5,000 per month. People are looking for this content. And if you can be page one, then that gets your rank up higher and higher and higher as the, your content you produce is, gets a better quality and you keep producing more content over time. We're just about to finish up. We've got 10 minutes left to go. And the other thing that I want, the other tool that I want to mention is the tube. Yeah. So on YouTube, there are a couple of um, extensions or that you can use um, with your YouTube experience, Video IQ and TubeBuddy. So TubeBuddy, um, Tube, TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy <laughs> has a um, tool that they use um, in their extension called the Keyword Explorer. So they utilize YouTube, again, second biggest search engine in the world, and it's being and it's owned by Google. So Google's going to give it all the love that it can get. And you can utilize the tool free. We use the free version um, to be able to see what other people are searching up on Google. So it does have a lot of similarities to the Google Keyword Planner in those respects, because it is somewhat using some of the same data, but it's very much focused onto YouTube. And because people who want an answer usually have a tendency of searching onto Google and YouTube at the same time, and because um, Google is doing their best to push um, you know, YouTube forward, it's a little baby, they always, um, for bigger search terms or search terms that people actually want a video answer, they have little areas at the top of the screen, um, at the top of the search results, which actually shows you the most popular videos for that particular search term. So using the TubeBuddy extension, the Keyword Explorer, you're able to find out what those keywords are. Like I said, like other um, other tools, you're able to see what people have searched in relation to that subject and what people, um, the terminology that people have used. Um, and you're able to see how high that goes. And you're also to see a couple of trends as well when you're talking about specific like keywords as opposed to key phrases that are being used. So key phrase like, you know, the ice bucket challenge. I know that's a couple of years old by now, but you can see the trend of how it got so popular really quickly and then slowly died down as people started making stuff and it became out of fashion or out of trend. And I really hope those people got their money. <laughs> but um, as, you, as you can see, you're able to see where those trends go and you're also able to predict somewhat those trends. Say, for example, anything to do with Christmas, as soon as it hits, you know, and a start of November, everything ticks up right up to Christmas, right up to Christmas, right up to Christmas. And then it goes boom. As soon as like, um, you know, Christmas Day happens, it goes right back down, ready to simmer on the interwebs until November next year. And then you get to do it all again. But when it comes time to using these keyword tools, don't use these at the be all and end all. Just making sure that you use these preferencing at the start of your journey of actually creating video content. But if not, feel free to use it after you've created the video. You know what the video is about. You know what the words that you want to use. You can just use these tools to type it in, search up and figure out, okay, what type of wording do I want to use for my title? What phrases do I want to encapsulate into the video um, to make sure that people actually find it and I get on that first page of Google. And even though first page of Google may not be the first thing that you want to do, having that as an aim of for people to be able to find your content is going to be useful and highly preferential for what you want to do um, in regards to creating content and building your business and letting it grow. So looking at the time, I think we'll be finishing off there and we will finish off ready to see you guys in the new year. Whoa. 
so I hope if you are still on holidays that you are enjoying your holidays um, and you're enjoying your time relaxing before you get started back into working um, and for those who are still and for those like myself who are working in the office um, who have been working in the office almost the entire time um, high five well done um, and you can keep going it's only the start of 2020 and I believe you can still do it so I'm going to leave you there any questions any comments feel free to comment below and I'll make sure that I respond and if you have any anything else that you want me to do a video on or do a live stream on make sure you comment them below as well all right I'm going to leave you guys there bye